I'm Ted Fay, and welcome to U.S. Borax, a legacy of innovation. In the 1870s and 1880s, borax mining took place in some of the wildest and most remote parts of the American West. Getting that borax out required big wagons. In fact, there was so much demand in the state of Nevada that Studebaker began manufacturing what they called the Nevada Iron Axle Wagon, able to haul 10 tons. But some of the most innovative ideas in transportation, well, they happened in what we now know is the hottest desert in the world, Death Valley. In 1849, pioneers in the California Gold Rush took a shortcut, leading them into one of the deepest, driest, hottest spots in the world. One of them died, and as the survivors escaped, they looked back and said, goodbye, Death Valley, and the name stuck. How could they know that this place they cursed as the creator's dumping ground would 30 years later yield riches in white gold, borax? When William Tell Coleman opened his borax operation, he had to get the borax to the railroad, 165 miles away at Mojave, a 10-day, one-way trip. He had five giant wagons built, able to hold 11 tons of borax each. The rear wheels were seven feet tall, and the front were five, with iron tires eight inches wide for sandy desert travel. Two wagons were hitched in tandem, and a third carrying a 1,200-gallon water tank was in the rear. The entire outfit, fully loaded, weighed 72,000 pounds or 36 and a half tons. Mules were hitched up in pairs, stretching out more than 100 feet in front of the wagons, there was no set number of mules, and they were simply called big teams or long line teams. The teamster used one line, called a jerk line, that stretched to the lead mule on the left. A steady pull on the line took the team to the left. A series of jerks, and the lead mule took the team to the right. To make a turn, some of the mules had to jump over the heavy chain that connected the mules to the wagon. The mules that jumped the chain pulled in the opposite direction from the rest of the team, taking the wagons far enough out to safely make the turn. Once the wagons made the bend, the mules jumped back over the chain and pulled the wagons straight. But in 1898, railroads replaced the mules. Soon trucks replaced the trains, and today the trucks have gotten bigger and bigger and bigger as you can see by the sizes of the garages over the years. Today the giant trucks are capable of hauling 220 tons, 10 times what the wagons carry. A fleet management system tracks the trucks via GPS and the tonnage can be tracked load by load with the exact time of each load and hauling or cycle. Even a final payload measurement can be made per load. The system not only provides for efficiency, but also for safety with direct communication. Guesswork is removed as there can be real-time optimization of haul truck routes, assignments, and even operator breaks can be balanced to keep production flowing. There's no doubt the innovation and technology of the company has taken it far beyond wagons and mules. So then, why is the image of mules and wagons on the box of borax still there? Well, for the answer to that, join me in the next episode of U.S. Borax, A Legacy of Innovation.